what you do every time you put food in your mouth is you taste it. And we think of taste in relation to the tongue. But Ayurveda thinks of taste as one of the five streams of your awareness. It's one of the five means whereby you know, where you experience life in all its complexity, in all its sublimity, in its gross aspects, in its refined aspects, in its subtle aspects. Taste is operating. So the word for taste in Ayurveda is rasa. And ra means to relish, to praise, or to taste. And sa means juice, sa, or secretion. So really, the whole concept of rasa means not just to taste, but to experience, to appreciate, to comprehend. It, it indicates interest, it indicates enthusiasm, it indicates emotion. It indicates a juice, it indicates a fine essence. So rasa is actually a very sublime way you draw the essence out of what you experience. And you experience taste even in your feelings, where you talk about bitter grief and sour grapes and sweet joy. You're tasting the flavor of your own thoughts and emotions. And so it's a very, very profound impact taste. And it's something we totally ignore and take for granted and put something on our tongue. We have not even noticed it. But unconsciously, your whole system has completely transformed on every level just with that experience of that taste. So really, you are in relationship with the whole of the universe. And one of your means of relation, of relating, is that sense of taste. And so, when you're talking about taste in relation to food, even the perception of the food, you're already tasting it. I have a friend that I occasionally meet in London, and when we go out to eat, she'll have the main course, but when it comes to dessert, she will only look at the menu. But she will always look at the menu. And she will look at everything on that dessert item. And everything she looks at, the creme brulee, oh, like Black forest, like, mm, oh. and she's really on and on the whole way through the menu. And when she's finished reading the menu, she's totally satisfied. <laughs> she's completely fulfilled the sense of taste without taking anything. <laughs> so there are stages of taste. It's not just that it hits your tongue and that's it. Okay, there are the initial six tastes we want to go into great detail, but after that, the taste, the food is swallowed, and it immediately has an impact in terms of what Ayurveda calls virya, which is the energy on the food, how it's energizing you. And finally, when you have digested it, there's final three tastes, called vipaka. So I want to talk about rasa taste, virya energy, vipaka. And if we could then talk a little bit more about taste, because you see, taste is your way of analyzing the elements in the food. The sweet taste is, is created in you by a predominance of the earth and water element in the food. So if that food predominates in those two elements, then you taste sweetness. In the same way, the sour taste is the combination of the experience of the earth and fire elements. So the earth and fire elements in that food predominating cause you to experience sourness. On the other hand, Taste, foods that have more of the water and fire elements are tasted as salty. Pungent. Pungent taste, a hot taste, is air and fire elements. And bitter taste has the air and space element strongest. And when the air and earth taste are strong in the food, you then have an astringent taste. So actually, when you remember that these elements are very primordial, very quantum mechanical, your taste is a consequence of the finest essence of the food. And it's your way of analyzing that and relating to it. Because these elements are going to be yours. They're going to actually be the elements you will then use to create your dishes. So the relationship has started. Let's look at these tastes and their effect in you. 
The sweet taste comes first. That's the one we all love, isn't it? And you know the foods that are sweet, sugar, honey, maple syrup, <coughs> licorice, dates, milk, rice, wheat. But sweet vegetables, carrot, beetroot. In fact, sugars, carbohydrates, fats, amino acids can all be sweet. The qualities that are associated with the sweet tastes are heaviness, cooling, and oily. The physical effects then, it promotes growth. And this is why children absolutely love the sweet taste, because they're growing and they need it to promote the growth. But it promotes strength as well and it promotes longevity. Sweet taste, properly used, gives you stability, vigor, and complexion. But excess sweet taste <laughs> causes congestion, diabetes, obesity, tumors, and laziness. That's on the physical side. How about your psychology? When you take something sweet, it enhances your love. That's why he brings you the chocolates. <laughs> it enhances compassion, joy, happiness. But if there's excess sweetness, you start to experience attachment. You get attached, you get greedy. You get addicted, you get possessive. This is the effect of too much sweet on your mind. In terms of Vata Pitta and Kapha, the sweet taste increases kapha, but it reduces your pitta and your vata. Are you interested to know what the sour taste does to you? Okay. Well, what foods will be sour, just to clear that in your mind? Lemon is, of course, yogurt, sour cream. Vinegar is a sourness. Grapefruit, fermented foods, tend to be sour. Sour things really are organic acids give the sourness. So the, the qualities associated with sourness are more a light, a liquid a heating and oily quality. And the physical effects, as soon as the sourness hits your tongue, it sharpens your senses. It stimulates your appetite, it energizes you. <laughs> but if you have too much salt, you'll notice your teeth become sensitive. You start feeling thirsty. You may get heartburn. It contributes to skin conditions and congestion. Psychologically, the sour taste, it improves your comprehension, it improves your discrimination, it improves your alertness. But excess causes you to become critical, judgmental, hatred, agitation, and it sours relationships. <laughs> the dosha that's affected, kapha and pitta are increased, but vata is reduced by the sour. Salty taste. Salt, seaweeds, but courgettes, cucumber, cucumbers, tomatoes also have an inherent saltiness. And the, the qualities are that <coughs> heating, heavy, oil. Physically, you use salt to enhance flavor. It also stimulates your salivation, your digestion, your absorption, your elimination. It promotes growth, energy, and maintains water balance. But too much salt contributes to blood pressure, fluid retention, heartburn, skin conditions, and wrinkles. <laughs> so cut back on the salt. Psychological effects. The salt enhances your confidence, your courage, your enthusiasm, your interest, and it actually improves relationships. But in excess, addiction. Did you ever have just one tater crisp? <laughs> Did you ever stop at just one? Once you start, you start with an addictive quality to the salt. And it causes attachment in excess, and greed, and possessiveness, and irritation. So, the doshas, it enhances or increases kapha and pitta, it reduces vata. Pungent, you know the hot taste? Pepper, ginger, garlic, chilies, due to the volatile oils, get this hot taste. The qualities are light, drying, and heating. Physically, the hot taste improves digestion, improves absor absorption, elimination, it clears your sinuses, it aids your circulation if you have cold hands and feet, to use the hot spices, it removes fat. But overuse it, it kills the sperm and the ova. It induces this burning feeling, ulcers, colitis, fatigue, thirst, diarrhea, giddiness, insomnia. The psychological effects of sweet taste in proper proportion, it brings enthusiasm, vitality, vigor, clarity of perception, sharpness of the mind, determination, excess, anger, violence, 
jealousy, envy. Of course, pungent is going to increase pitta, but it reduces kapha and vata. Now, two tastes we're not so familiar with. The bitter taste. Bitter is not one we have a lot in our diet, which is why, partially, we're addicted to coffee. So many people addicted to coffee because it has a bitter taste. Other foods that have it, like turmeric, fenugreek, aloe vera has it. Leafy greens have a bitterness. Grapefruit. There are alkalides and glycosides that give this bitterness. So the qualities associated with it are cool, light, dry. The effect physically is to improve all the other tastes. It kills the germs. It relieves burning, itching, fainting, and obstinate skin disease. It's a digestive, it relieves wind, it supports the pancreas. But excess of bitter taste, it causes nausea, it causes you to feel depleted, it contributes to osteoporosis, and again inhibits the production of sperm. Psychologically, this is an interesting one, it makes the mind celibate. It gives for introspection and introversion, but therefore in excess it can cause a feeling of separation isolation, loneliness. The final taste is astringent. And you'll see it in unripe bananas. Astringency is a sort of a dryness in the mouth. You'll have it with pomegranate, with chickpeas, green beans, with turmerics. Many medicines are astringent. In food, it's tannins that cause the astringency. And the qualities associated are cold, dry, heavy. The physical effects however, of astringency, is that it improves your absorption and it binds your stool. It prevents or reduces inflammation. It is a decongestant. It helps stop bleeding, heals ulcers, scrapes away fat. However, in excess, it griping, pain, spasms, constipation. It promotes clotting of the blood. It lowers the sex drive. It causes emaciation, contributes to convulsion and paralysis. Psychologically, it, remember, has the earth and air elements. And the earth elements cause astringent tastes to feel, you feel more grounded. So it makes the mind collected and organized. But then in excess, that earth element creates depression, heaviness of depression. The air element could, in excess, make the mind scattered, disorganized, anxiety, insomnia, rigidity, harshness, emotional stagnation. Isn't it fascinating? and you barely notice the taste. And this is what it's doing to you. So it's wise to recognize the significance of this relationship you have with food. It's important to have a balance of tastes. You see, there should be six tastes in all meals. And anybody who regularly takes six tastes in all meals is very likely to remain healthy. According to the lack of tastes, there's increased likelihood of illness. If you one taste missing, you're likely to be more ill. If two, more ill again, according to the Ayurvedic perspective. So we should have all six tastes. But we should have the right proportion. You know, and considering your own nature and vata, pitta, and kapha, you should have the right quantity of those tastes that suit you. Um, used appropriately, then the tastes are nectar. But if you have the inappropriate combination of tastes for your nature, then that could result resulted harm. So we've talked about vata being influenced, reduced by sweet, sour, and salty taste. Whereas the other three tastes, the pungent, the bitter, and the stringent, increase your vata. Your pitta, pitta is reduced by that sweet, bitter, astringent taste. But the three tastes that have the fire element in them, the pungent taste, the sour taste, and the salty taste. Sour was earth and fire, salty was water and fire. So therefore, fire element, that increases the pitta. And the kapha is reduced by the pungent and the bitter and the astringent. Whereas the sweet, sour, and salty taste increase kapha. So like that, immediately our doshas, vata, pitta, kapha are influenced by the tastes.